Welcome back to Educator.com. This is the next nervous system lesson, specifically on the spinal cord and nerves. If we were to look at the nervous system as a giant flow chart that had to do with the brain, the spinal cord, and all the nerves, this is a very good representation. So up at the top here in the orange box, we have the central nervous system, which as you learned before, if you saw the previous lesson, is the brain and spinal cord. That communicates with the peripheral nervous system, which is all the nerves extending from the spine and extending from the cerebral area, from the cranium. These work in conjunction, of course, having to do with sending out signals, getting signals up into them. And there are two main divisions in terms of the tracks that the, the neurons run along. There's the motor or efferent division and the sensory or afferent division. Sensory has to do with your senses. Those are the signals going from the peripheral nervous system up into the spinal cord and brain. It's the opposite with motor. Motor having to do with movement, having to do with initiating those responses from out of the central nervous system. The way that I keep the words afferent and efferent straight is I think of it alphabetically in terms of the brain being up top, kind of like the top of the alphabet, and so A has to do with going up to the brain. Afferent is all of these sensory signals. Efferent is going down, going out. And another way you could remember it is that the end goal of an efferent signal is the effector, which starts with the same beginning there. Whatever's being effected, a muscle, a gland, an organ, by that motor um, signal. And so yeah, motor nerve fi fibers and sensory nerve fibers... Sometimes they're contained in different nerves, and other times there are nerves that are called mixed because they have both afferent and efferent tracks. When you look at the spinal cord as a whole, the spinal cord has a motor section or afferent section. Sorry, efferent, I just did it. Motor or efferent section and sensory or afferent section. So make sure you keep those straight. Afferent, efferent. Then when you look at how the motor part of it is working in terms of initiating uh, you know, actions in your body, the somatic portion is all the things you have conscious control over. Soma means body. So when I move my fingers, move my arm, move my legs, those have to do with the somatic or voluntary um, motor neurons because I've elected to consciously do that. But the other side of it is autonomic. Autonomic, think of it as automatic. It's a slightly different word, but it basically means the same thing. It's automatic without you having to think about it. So the autonomic part of the of the motor division is all of those activities that just happen without you having to think about it. For instance, your heart rate. Your, you do not have to think about beating your heart, and that's a good thing. Your breath rate. Yes, you can consciously choose to manipulate your breathing, but you don't have to. And then, of course, there's the blood vessels. Another one is sweating. Sweating, you don't, you don't have to think to make yourself sweat. It happens when you need it to. Same with digestion. So all of those things are regulated by the autonomic branch of the peripheral nervous system. Specifically, it's the motor branch of the PNS. When you look at the autonomic part, there's two main divisions, which I'm going to go over in more detail later in this lesson. The sympathetic, which has to do with fight or flight response when there's danger. And then the opposite of it, which is parasympathetic, which is more like rest and digest. So all of these fit together to make your nervous system do what it does.